Good evening, dear friends. On Deep Talks this night, we are having Ian Harvey from London and a very, very special soul tonight with us. Alongside, we have Srishti, who will be letting us know what Ian Harvey is all about. A beautiful soul who has taken out his precious time to be there on Deep Talks Virtual Reality on Love and Relations because we are candid with Ian and I'm so sure that I'm delighted to have him on board my platform. The reality of life is always in having the conversations last in your mind, even if one soul is coming on this episode and one soul is getting affected, it is making a big difference. So my dear friends, with a great round of applause from my side, I am welcoming Srishti and Ayan Harvey. So Srishti, welcome, good evening, and may I have the introduction of Ayan Harvey so that we can conclude later on this beautiful episode in a very bright and positive manner. And not only that, start it up with enough light and hope for another one. Good evening and welcome everyone. It is my great privilege to introduce to you our guest for tonight, Mr. Ian A. Harvey. Coming from a large family, being one of six children, Ian's loving parents always struggled hard to keep the family afloat. At the tender age of three, he was diagnosed with acute cirrhosis, a visual autoimmune disease. From missing school to being bullied and leaving school with average grades, he learned to handle negativity and began to focus on a vision for his future. He decided to seek out a different lifestyle for himself and his own family. In order to earn a living, he missed out on higher education and sold wholesale items at sensible profits, building a successful business with large turnover and employing several people. However, realizing the need of formal educational qualifications to back up his successful business experience, he sold his business to study marketing, re-engineering and business management. He then went on to own two more successful businesses with a turnover in millions. He is the national runner-up of UK National Sales Awards. He also, for the past 20 years, has been a consultant on many large assignments for various companies, making them a household name in UK and Europe. In addition to his corporate assignments, he has developed training programs for individuals and is currently mentoring many people who wish to transform their lives. His vast wealth of experience has established him as a leader in direct sales and a great motivator. I would now like to request Gulleen Ma'am to host Sir and I shall take a leave to be back and monitoring the conversation as a communication connect. Thank you so much, Srishti, for a wonderful introduction to Ayan Harvey. And I'm so glad to have you, Ayan, with me. Uh, it's a privilege to understand who you are besides the achievements. So I would love to congratulate you on the award that you got. So let me and the viewers know what Ian actually does. Apart from what the introduction was all about, coming it from you would be something that would be really very special and significant for the audience who will be viewing across the globe and the Indians who would love to know who Ian Harvey is all. Sure. Well, thanks for inviting me on the call. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> my goal is to get the message out to everybody that you can have anything you want if you want it badly enough. You know, when I was young, I did have, um, I still have actually psoriasis, which is yes. a is a skin condition. Now, the challenge with that is that everyone looks at it, everyone points, everyone makes fun. So I had to get through that barrier first, and I did yes. lose quite a lot of time at school because that was difficult, but. The one thing that really that's always been my driving force and now I'm helping thousands of other people is that, uh, yes, my parents were both at work and yes, my father worked for the police force, but it was a time when there wasn't a lot of money. And I remember yeah. going to my mom and saying, hey, I got holes in my shoes. And she said, you have to put cardboard in, we have no money to buy shoes. You know, and I decided then, really early on, that you know, this is not the lifestyle that I want. I love my parents, but I'm going to have a different lifestyle when I grow up and when I start my own family. So right from a small age, probably six or seven, I decided I'm going to have a different lifestyle to this when I grow up. And that's never changed. Yeah. 
तो अब आई एंड दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज एन ऑनेस्ट कंफेशन ऑन दिस शो दैट डू यू थिंक दैट पॉवर्टी टीचेस यू अ लॉट और अ हंगर टीचेस यू अ लॉट इन लाइफ बिकॉज़ समवेयर द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ गोइंग थ्रू लो फेजेस आई बिलीव इन दैट नो पेन नो गेन आई बिलीव दैट टीचेस यू अ लॉट मच मोर देन हैविंग ऑल द रिचेस at a very young age do you agree on this thought and how did you overcome this concept of being driven to work more hard more and move the ball for being who you are today and making the head turn okay well i i i unless you're actually um given a golden spoon uh which basically means you've gifted everything at a young age then i think it's a misconception that you can just uh go through life and all of a sudden it will all just happen because yeah. I, don't, i don't think you know people who say oh i've not had many challenges in my life when i actually do mentor with them and coach them with them they have had challenges they decide to bury them well i decided the opposite i decided you know i'm not going to bury the facts i'm going to positively respond to them and i am going to have and it's quite interesting because you know through my periods of life you know i've had businesses i've had mishaps uh i've i got a young business really straight out of school you know and that fell over a bit because i didn't quite know what i was doing i had no business acumen at all so i was just building this empire and suddenly found out i did it all wrong you know and and i have been to the rock bottom you know so the thing is once you do that you really then start to get life's experiences and it's oh. different from if you just go to one level yeah and everyone thinks oh you know it's all right for him but when you start yeah. to research most successful people are successful because they had a hard time at some point in their life but they decided to rise up against the challenge and to take the challenge on and start to create and for me I mean the great thing is I see lots of people um and I help lots of people and and the the one thing that really fires me up is when I see people down on their knees people really struggling but shouldn't need to be then i just absolutely think it's fab- fabulous to be able to lift them up with all my 30 odd years experience now and help them transform their lives oh that's fantastic the amount of meaning in the words that you're speaking i and uh, they're holding a lot of significant amount of thoughts therein where people should implement these words into their behavior every day because everyone faces a low low point in their life and i believe as a mental health expert we need to talk about these things because these are the things that people hesitate to talk about when they are facing a low and they do not ask for assistance so i in uh, what was that one turning point in your life that made you decide to be who you are today mentoring people around the globe if i'm not wrong because there are many people who must have been inspired by your success so i would love to know is there any particular soul that you're inspired from or was there a turning point that made you think hard apart from the disease you had and would you love to just enlighten the viewers across the globe and the indians to know what was that one thought that struck you that you need to have the riches as well as a quality living well i think the one thing that really sort of sort of like got me fired up but also got me a little bit uh, frustrated was I had um this skin condition psoriasis since age of 3 and what that actually meant is that uh, even at that sort of age other children would look at it and say what is that and and, and you know I I I must have lost so much time from school but at the end of the day I had two choices I could lie down and just do nothing about it or take it on the chin and think you know I am going to make sure that other people don't go through this and yes sometimes you have to go through the pain to understand yeah. it to be able to share it and help other people not go through the pain or go through the pain with an understanding that somebody knows and somebody cares about them True. so so that was very young when that came on but when i was at the um the school the secondary school and you know it was really really you know tough going because you know everyone would turn up in there like brand new or and mine were hand downs and and that was okay because i always knew my parents heart was pure and that was what really was important to me so i then um when i actually left school i actually well, while i was at school i hooked up with a guy who said to me i said to him this is what i want to do and he said to me well um 
if you want to do that, you need to write some goals. You need to have goals. That's what he said. You need to have goals. Wow. That's fantastic. Well, I didn't know what he meant. So the only goal was I knew. You kicked a ball, it went in the net, you got a goal. And he's like, no, 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 you have to write them down. And so I, I wrote them down, and this is what I would like. And then I was working with this guy. Uh, he had market stores, so I was working with him before and after school. And he, he was doing like, he was helping me, he was mentoring me. And then after a very short illness, he died. And I was left again with another disappointment now. It's like, hey, you know, I'm going through these processes. But all it did, it made me then go and research what this goal setting process was all about. I had no idea. And so I then started to invest in myself. People like um, some of your viewers will know Zig Ziglar, who is like a really big motivational coach. You know, I started, I started to understand what this was about. And I suddenly start to realize, you know, that most of the things that go on and most of the success is created from up here. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and a lot of people do say, well, you know, you have to change your mind if you're going to be <laughs> successful. Yeah. Well, I like to ask them this question. When people say to me, you need to change your mind, I say, how is that possible? Because if you go to the doctor and say, oh, chop my arm off, you can chop <laughs> your arm off. If you say, take my brain out, you can take your brain out. If you said, take my mind out, it's, a, you have, it's not a tangible thing. You don't have a thing called a mind. It's a process of all of the things you build up, what you take in, what you don't take in, and we class it as a mind. But reality is you could not go to a doctor and say, remove my mind, because you don't have There's nothing to remove. Yeah. But what I did understand really early is that whatever you put into your head, which is classed as your mind, is, is the way forward that you go. Yeah. And many people, you know, something that's quite important to people, if they are going to go out on their own venture, um, is, is you have to understand is not everyone is going to be on that trip with you. Not everyone is going to be in alignment with you. Some people are not going to like this whatsoever. And you have to decide right above it. You have to ride above it. And it's tough. That's it's tough then because then you have to decide who's with you on this journey and who's holding you back. Now, I have a great tool, which is called, I don't know if you know it, but there's something called quicksand. Now, if you stand in it, it sucks you underneath and eventually it pulls down and yep. it will suffocate you and you will die. Well, I have something called quicksand crowd, as in a crowd of people. And I tell yeah. everyone, you need to be careful who's in your quicksand crowd because a lot of them are going to try and pull you down. You know, they're not going to want your success. They're going to be jealous of your success. And people used to say to me, oh, you know, you don't want to do that. You'll make no money. And I always said, oh, when was the last time you did it? Oh, well, I didn't, but my <laughs> friends told me. Yeah. yeah but you true. need to be aware of the quicksand crowd because they're out there. And the proportions are this, is 5% of the people earn 95% of the money. Yeah. And 95% of the people earn 5% of the money. Oh. So you're always outnumbered. So there's a far lot more people who are cheering you on not to make it than there are who are cheering you on to make it. So you have to be careful. One thing I learned really early on is you have to be careful who your friends are because your friends can sink you in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, so, that's so rightly put forward, my dear viewers. It's something very interesting and something very meaningful, which I understated is that I haven't heard anyone on this show talking about something as honest as the company matters. It matters truly, and it is so, so, so good to just hear this because somewhere, even when I was going through my phase, there were people standing by and pulling me down as well as uh, talking something that was not of my interest and not even talking something that was good and positive. So you have to see in your life where you stand and who all are you surrounded by to make a significant difference, not only to yourself, but to people around. And I'm sure I and you must have had your own fair share of failures to be who you are. It's an honor for me to be with you on this episode because it takes a lot to be there on the front facing the questions and the queries wherein people hesitate to answer 
something as personal as their life is. And I totally believe as a mental health expert, if I can make a difference by talking on such topics, then there would be someone or the other one who would be across the globe or from any corner of the world listening to this and making a difference in their lives. By being positive is something that I've learned in life. Do you think that being optimistic always helps in life rather than being pessimistic because situations do happen and we need to be really very focused on something that's called not giving up. As you rightly mentioned that you never gave up, you could have lied flat there. But do you think that at an, at an early age you got that wisdom to just have that idea that you need to grow, this isn't enough, this is not enough, you are made for more. I, and I would love to hear from you what was that feeling and what was that one big achievement that kick-started all your achievements later on? Okay, well, um, if we just reverse back a bit, you know, the, the one thing that um, I think is, is important to everyone is, you know, we all do have disappointments as we go along. What it is we actually do as we go along makes the big difference. Now, for example, if I was to, I, I can do a little example with you right now. If I was to give you right now, let's say we're talking dollars, if I was to give you $86,400 now and yeah. say to you, okay, you've got one day to spend these $86,400. You can't buy anything over five, uh, $5,000, but what you don't spend by this time tomorrow, I will take back. Yeah. So here's the choice. I'll give you $86,400. Would you go and spend it? Or would you say, no, bearing in mind this time tomorrow, what you haven't spent, I'm going to okay. take back. True. Fantastic. That's a nice approach. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone, like when I say to these people in my mentoring program, I'm going to give you $86,400. What you haven't spent by this time tomorrow, I'm taking back. Would you like to go and spend it? Or they're like, like get me out of here. They are gone. I'm off to spend it now. And the reality <laughs> is... Every day we get 86,400 seconds, every single day. So how we spend it is up to us. Now, if it's money, because yeah. we can buy material things with it, we're gone. We're going to spend it all. But because it's time, we waste it. The one thing I've discovered very early on is if you are going to get through these barriers, if you are going to be successful, if you are going to take the disappointments and move them forward and build on them rather than shrink, then you need to absolutely value the only currency you have, which is called time. Every day you get 86,400 seconds. You cannot replace it. It's gone. It's completely gone yeah so you need to 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 take that hard and say okay what is the best use of my time okay and so you need to plan it yeah yeah so i uh i would love to ask you this thing that uh time is money that's what you were stating in short like you know you need to prioritize your tasks and you need to know where you're investing your every second and that is one reason i believe that business uh, men uh, succeed in their life so how would you term success as, or what would you define success as? I would love to ask you because uh, after all, achieving all the success and being the CEO of your mind is your program. And I would love to know what it talks about and how it leaves an impact on the people whom you have mentored. And I'm sure there are great followers around you who are mesmerized with the way that you have moved up the ladder in the business and increased the sales and have been you know, doing wonders around. And there's one such fan of yours named Vikas Singh, who says, Ayn Harvey is a can-do guy. Nothing phases him. Nothing will stand in his way. A relentless success seeker. God, I love Ayn Harvey, his program, Become the CEO of Your Mind. We'll leave you with a much clearer version of how to create the lifestyle you desire. He says, I've attended many of his webinars, and he's really a great mentor. Thank you, Gurleen, ma'am, and her entire team for bringing Harvey, sir, and his incredible expertise again in my life. So you have touched many souls, Ayan, and I'm so sure that after this show, I'm also going to be moved and I'm sure that my sales or my business is going to be impacted with your words because you carry so much of power and nothing, nothing stops us 
if only we intend to put those efforts every single moment so how would you love to talk about your program the ceo of your mind i would love to know the concept of it and our viewers would love to know what it is all about okay this the ceo is obviously it's the chief executive officer of your mind and basically what it is it's taking control of your own mind it's of your thoughts now the biggest thing that people say to me is think outside of the box well i'm here to tell you i don't have a box i always say to people that's impossible and if people say to me think outside the box i would run from them as far as possible because they don't understand how this works you see you don't have a box where is the box there isn't one so when people sure. say think outside of the box it's like i always tell them i don't have a box because sure. where you know if you've got a box burn the box trash the box get rid of the box all the box is is things that you programmed into your head that become real there is no box at all so what the ceo become the ceo of your mind is is you start to become selective on what you allow in so for example if you brought a garden right now a new house yeah. right now sorry and in the garden you did no work for it in a few months the garden will be full of weeds because they grow automatically. Now, if you got rid of all those weeds and you planted seeds of flowers, then in the same period of time, you'd have a nice flower garden. Well, it's the same with your mind. It's what you plant is what you get. So if you like think of negativity, it's going into your mind, you're gonna get it. You know, if the weeds will grow. If you actually, for example, I give a great example on this because we should start early with our yeah. children. So all of my children have always been told for breakfast, we have affirmations. So when we get up in wow. the morning, because it's been scientifically proven the first 30 minutes of the day, the last 30 minutes of the day is when you are most receptive, like a sponge and you absorb more. So early, at a very early age, this is three and four, I, I actually was talking to my daughters about affirmations. What is it you want out in life? And I got them to repeat their affirmations. I got called to the school. One of my daughters was age four and a half. I got called to the school and they said, we've never seen this before, but your daughter has been so disruptive. And, and oh. she's had to sit in this office all day. So I said, oh, okay. And my daughters aren't like that. So I was a bit concerned. So anyway, I went in and my daughter was there and the headmistress was there and the teacher. So I said, well, what's, what's the problem then? And the teacher said, well, today we have been asking everyone, what do you have for breakfast? And your daughter keeps saying she has affirmations for breakfast. <laughs> That's we fantastic. That, That's so, yeah. We don't even know what affirmations are, but we're telling her, no, you don't. And she's saying, yes, I do. Ask my dad. You know? <laughs> and they're like, ah, okay, I have to explain this thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. True. But the thing is, all four of my daughters have gone on to be very successful in their own rights. You know? Wonderful, wonderful. We would love to know what your daughters are doing, Guy, and that's a fantastic uh, way to, you know, kick off the breakfast and the conversations because this is what keeps us burning. Because deep talks is all about the candid confessions, and I would love to know that what it is that has kicked you off in being a great father as well. Some tips and how you can become a great parent as well while maintaining the business because this is all about talking of relationships as well. And I'm sure that personal life does affect the professional life. And I do agree with it that if your personal life is happy and business will obviously boom, it's just interconnected. And I totally agree on that, that there needs to be a little bit of dependence in life. Success is never one alone. It is a team effort. So how would you love to talk about your daughters and your journey as a parent? Yeah, well, I think as a parent, it's exactly as I wanted it to be, you know, because when I was struggling at the age of six or seven, that's when I made the decision that when I have my family, it will be different. So straight away, we program them in. Um, I, I, all of my daughters do goal setting. All of them have done goal setting for so long. They all do affirmations because we know they've got two choices. We can either sit them in front of a television all day or yeah. we can do something proactive with them and so we Why decided it's the proactive 
the proactive way to move it forward. And my daughters, one of them does um, hair extensions for famous people. Another one is a top um, hairdresser. One of you, one has worked for one of the top positions in Jaguar Land Rover as a marketing director. So they've all had, and you know, another one is absolutely a hundred percent into social media as an expert. So they've they've all carved themselves out something yeah. that they can do and do when they have their children as well. Wow. So it's, it's quite great to do this now. And, and the other thing is, is, is this is where society is right now that we need to move away from it. Because we did an exercise. We said to one of our daughters, just put on Facebook, and they have thousands of people, you know, the young. And she said, put on Facebook, you would not believe what happened to me. And so she did. She put, you would not believe what happened to me. She had hundreds, if not getting up to thousand people say, are you okay, babe? Do you want me to come around? Is everything okay? Have you got a problem? And then a week later, we got another daughter to put on, a, on her Facebook, you would not believe what happened to me. I got a new job. Whoa, she got, she got, well, hang on. She got less than 10 people acknowledge her. So the first one said, you would not believe what happened to me. It's like, you okay, babe? And that got thousands. The positive <laughs> statement, you know, where she actually said, you would not believe what happened to me. I got a new job, no interest whatsoever. And that is just where society is. You have to protect your, okay. yeah, because because they're all absorbing all of this stuff in. The other thing that, that we don't do, and, you know, and I tell everyone, please don't ask me about the television. Because, exactly. yeah, I don't do the television. You know, so if you ask me about a film, the only film I actually know is Forrest Gump, you know, <laughs> but I don't watch television because because the people on my mentoring program, the one thing I say to them is like, they said we're having a bad time for the way the current climate is. True, true. And, so that, that's fantastic, Ian. And I, I, I wish to book an appointment with your daughter soon if I ever happen to visit London again. That would be fantastic to even talk to them and converse and maybe have them on my show after you. They'll be proud to see the show as well afterwards that, oh my God, dad appeared on an Indian show, virtual platform. Uh, well, this is something that you're contributing to the mental health wellness. And I believe that every walk, every talk is important in life. And whatever you're discussing is something that's so candid, that's so honest, and that's so nice. I haven't felt so comfortable ever before talking to you, Ian. And I would love to know, uh, and the viewers would love to know, what are the tips that they can follow to increment their business sales? And if you have one, then why not share those? Because there would be some people who are not having enough of sufficient funds to even go and listen to any of the real shows or get some tickets for the benefit of their business. So we would love to know from Ian Harvey because he is the man who is impacting a larger audience. So from London, I know that it isn't easy to get in touch with people like that, but I'm so privileged that you are there with me on the love seat and talking about it. We would love to hear from you some business tips that can actually make someone really feel worthy enough. Okay, well, the first thing that everyone can do as a gift is if they go to my website, which is simple, it's ianaharvey.com, then everyone who's listening tonight can have a free 30-minute consultation with me. That's so they don't have to pay. They just go to the website. It says free consultation. Hit that button and register for a free 30-minute consultation. And what we'll do there is because sales aren't made at the front end. They're made at the rear end in other words the sales are what goes on in here you know and oh. it's the way of thinking so for example um, i remember the story about the shoe sellers that went to some third country third world okay. country and said uh rang his boss when he landed and said get me home no one wears shoes here another <laughs> company sent a guy from a different company went there landed got off the plane and said send me more salespeople." They don't wear shoes here yet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about concept in your mind. And a lot of people, the only things that stop them back is because they're putting the wrong stuff upstairs. You know, if you plant the flowers and work hard on it. Now, I can just show you just one because, you know, um, I know we're running out of time. Where's a good camera? Let's try. That. So these, for example, uh, yeah. are my affirmation cards. 
So I've been wow. doing this for 34 years and I still have affirmation cards. Now, yeah. on the front of it says, you'll either step forward into growth or step back into safety. And then on the back of it is one of my goals. Where's the camera? Here it is. So I've got one of my goals. And these are my affirmations. So I don't just have one. I have a whole series of them. Oh, my God. That's a fantastic way to uh, move up the ladder. And that's a, that's something Ian has shared with us. And I'm sure the ones who are watching, they would be doing this up because this is something that's so meaningful. It's so touching. And it's so nice. It's something called organizing your time, your work, and your space for a quality lifestyle so that's fantastic iron so uh, this is your own thought that you developed over the time period how many years you're in the business you were talking about 35 years you've had experience of the business so as a businessman what would you think that would make you happy in uh, in actually uh, putting people up on that space where they can earn a living and live a quality life or that's called mentoring that you are doing already and attaining the success in it or or writing a book alongside so that it impacts the larger audience as well what is that one thing that still is uncovered untouched and you would love to do iron apart from the all the achievements that you've had in your life i would love to know and our viewers would love to know i think the one thing that we have now that we never used to have is we have social media so i used to spend all of my time on the road up until the um the uh lockdown then uh, the previous year, I did 120 plus flights. So I was just doing lectures all over the world. That can't happen anymore now. So now I've had to learn social media. I've had to reinvent myself to understand social media, how it works. And, and yeah. you know, we don't need to recreate the wheel. What we need yeah. to do is we need to have a garage sale in our head. Get rid of all the junk. Make sure we put the positive stuff in there. And I, I have over 60 people at the moment on my mentoring program. And wow. some of them are launching books. They're doing public speaking. They are doing incredible things that they never believed they could. So the one thing that I will leave your viewers with is certainly go and have a look at enaharvey.com. Have the yeah. free consultation. There is no obligation to go forward with anything. So just go there. Yeah. Once you've actually done that and had a consultation, you will leave with a clear map on what you need to do to move forward. And then you can choose at that point in time to either go on, go ahead with the mentoring program or just say, I had a great 30 minutes. I know what I need to do now. Off I go. It's absolutely fine because my number one goal is to help as many people as possible turn their failures into success. That's so important. That's so important, Ian. And uh, that's incredibly uh, beautiful to touch another soul's life. And I would love to know who has been that inspiration apart from your parents and uh, others around you. I'm sure there would be someone who has affected your life. And I would love to know how to have healthy relationships apart from being the business head that you are and the CEO of your own mental set i would just love to know and the viewers would love to know the tips that do you know just uh, have a healthy relationship because this program is all about breaking the barriers and befriending strangers and that's how we connected we connected over your shows which you started off and i was listening to every single episode because that seemed so much me i'm so much into those significant words which can be implemented to make a difference and i am up with being a co-author in a book breakdown to wake up and I felt so very happy to feature amongst the foreigners that I feel that a lady who's had a divorce battle could stand up to what she is. And apart from not only that, fought her battle very wisely and is trying to stand and be who I am today. I have no fear as to what others are about to say or others would say. Society needs more people who are revolutionary, who can make a difference and bring in a change. Maybe deep talks is because of that. And this is something that's so special to me, Ian, because this is something that makes me drive more towards the goal that I have as a public speaker. And not only that, I'm happy that you are there to touch many souls. I'm sure that you would be there to help me and guide me in the future as well, whenever I need you. So I would love to know from your side, what are the tips to have healthy relationship apart from managing whatever you are managing that's actually uh, commendable i would say it's commendable to be who you are today as a person because it takes a lot to overcome 
the disease that you were talking of? Okay, well, I think the one thing that everyone needs to do is they need to have balance in their life. So if you go too heavy in the one direction, then you'll have an imbalance. And if you have an imbalance, then you start to lose that. I mean, one of my affirmation cards, let me just have a look, because uh, these are ones I do every day. You know, and one of them, let's see if I can find it for you quickly. Um, oh, here we go, this one here. So this one here, that on the uh, back of it, oh, let's see where the camera is, there we go. You can't yeah, read it, yeah, I'll yeah. tell you what it says. I live in a peaceful, beautiful, loving relationship. Wow. You see, so it's not all about goals, about business. You should have some for your spiritual awareness, you should have some for your family, and you should have some for your business. Because that's way that way you get the balance. That's for sure. What I would say, the number one tip is start to feel uncomfortable, because people say I'm out of my comfort zone, and I say you don't feel like you are. And one of the easiest ways to start to feel uncomfortable, because that's what you need to do to start to get the dust off you, yes. is read for thirty minutes a day. However, you might say, well, that's easy. That doesn't make me uncomfortable. Sure. Read for 30 minutes a day out loud. Yeah. Now, that's different for most people because most people never read out loud. They get a book and they do it. They listen to the audio tapes. Read a book out loud. It makes you feel uncomfortable at first. Sure. And then you're starting to break down these barriers because – I'll just share one more thing so I know we have to end, but I can come back another time. Um, so the, the one thing you need to do is you need to leave your past behind you. Thanks. So you need to, you know, anything behind you, you need to lock the door, you need to burn the bridge, burn the boat so there's no way back. Because for me, if you leave a, if leave a way back, True. it's accepting failure in advance. Because if you actually get your mind right and you are absolutely going to go out there, you're going to transform yours and your family's life, then you just need to focus on the future because you cannot change history. You can yes. create it, but you can't change it. What's done is done. So it's no point saying, do you remember? So lock that door behind you, bolt it, shut it, get rid of the boat, take up the bridge so there is no way back for you. And then you start to get serious about what you plant in your mind. True. True. That's so fantastic that I have never, never, never been so happy to have you on board the Steve Talks because you have talked something that has made sense to me and I'm sure that it will make sense to all the viewers are watching and this special episode with you will turn out to be moving many hearts and mind i and i'm so privileged and so honored that i cannot even express in words what i felt when i just asked you those few questions about your life and i'm sure that there are people who are being touched like vikas has rightly pointed out few of the things that that are really needed affirmations positive thinking visualizations and the power of your subconscious mind is best explained by harvey sir love you sir so he is all out there for you I'm so sure that there are people who are sitting in their homes that don't get to ask for assistance. So my dear friends and the viewers who are watching me, my name and my surname spells my email ID, gurleenkoker at gmail.com. You can reach out for counseling services to open up the window for a brighter tomorrow. With this, I'm so honored and glad to have Ayn Harvey with me, who has had rich experience of 35 years in the United Kingdom. And I'm so sure that he's from Stratfordshire. I'm sure that this is the place you're belonging to, Ayn. So if anyone would love to connect to him and have a look at his website, this ianharvey.com, and he can connect to me and I can connect you to him. So you can have the 30 minutes free session with him as well. And before we end this conversation, because there's always a beginning after an end, I would love to know, Ian, what would be that one thing in your life that you can state has been the biggest achievement so far and how can our viewers learn not to give up on their life. The ones who have lost the hope in their business, the business has gone crash down during the COVID times. How can they stick on to their small businesses and make their life fruitful enough? Well, Les Brown sums this up quite well because he said, when life knocks you down, always try and fall on your back. 
because if you can look up, you can get up. I have been on my back many times, but you make that decision of whether you're going to quit and give everything up or you make the decision you're going to stand back up, you're going to shake off the dust and you are going to move forward. It's a choice that you make. True. That's, that's so well said and that's fantastic. And that was wonderful having you. One last message for the host of the show. And we are done with this conversation, but I'm sure that I'll be calling you again with the shortage of time and our priorities set aright. I'm sure that we are going to be striking a deal later on. And I'm not going to miss any of your shows, that is for sure, because I learn a lot from what you talk about. And I'm sure as a psychologist, there's always another soul whom you can learn from and rise in life. So one last message for the host. And we end up this conversation for another beginning and another show, maybe another month or whenever you have the time to iron. Sure, sure. Well, the one thing I would say is keep on keeping on and never, ever give up. There is always a brighter tomorrow and it always works out as long as you stand up and face with fear behind you, not in front of you. Thanks a lot. That was a fantastic blessing coming my way. And I would love to always stay touch with you and the viewers who have been watching us. Please share this if you like this, because someone can be impacted with what I has conveyed. It's a knowledge that he's shared and he's passed on something that's more than wealth that I can believe in. Knowledge shared is always, always, always beneficial, my dear friends. So stay tuned for tomorrow's episode as well as day after. We are bringing in fantastic souls on the love seat. This is Kurleen Coker signing off. Thanks a lot, Ayn, for joining. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye.